looks so nice. It's a bit dark really, but it's still really, really nice. There's a sparkly one as well. Sparkles! Tweed! Happy colours! There's another two sparkles side by side! Gracie Grey Grey! Oh, don't you love it? I love it. Alright, on with the show. checking photos on. <laughs> Good morning everybody. How are you today? My name is Grace and you are currently watching my little podcast called Babbles Travelling Yarns and I am an Irish girl who lives in Ireland at the moment. Surprise, surprise. So I have been travelling around the world for the last couple of years and I've come home to settle in Ireland but I'm still going to be doing a bit of travelling around Ireland and in a couple of other places which I will be talking about later on in the podcast. Keep, stay tuned. Um, so you can find me everywhere as Vanna Willemiel on Instagram, on Ravelry, and Periscope and Patreon and yes um if you want to pop over to the patreon and have a little look and see what's on offer there i um mainly it's just for people who kind of want to support i'm not looking to make any money off it really i just want to cover a few costs of um i run virtual knit nights and the platform that yeah, costs a little bit of money as well as posting out prizes and, and thank you so much to everybody that is uh, that has um, given me, uh, you know, some part of your hard earned money because I really, really appreciate it and thank you so much. I really enjoy what I do. I really enjoy hosting the virtual knit nights on Tuesday nights, Saturday nights and Sunday mornings. And there's one tonight actually. This Oh yeah, it's Saturday the 29th. Oh my God, I'm so organized. Oh my God, you guys, you're going to be so proud of me. I've written up my show notes. My show notes are written up, my computer's over here, and um, my camera is like, there's a really complicated setup behind the camera at the moment. I'm so proud of myself. However, I probably will have to pause and do some fiddling halfway through when it starts to get a bit fuzzy. Let me just, okay, cool. <laughs> okay, 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 cool. <laughs> that makes no sense to anybody. Doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, I have a couple of things to talk to you about. A uh, talk to you about today. Yes, I was saying that the right the first time. <sighs> it's been a busy week. Um, I've just been working my little bottom off. Um, I have. I'm not feeling 100% health wise at the moment, so I'm taking it easy this weekend. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Um, I'm just taking it a bit easy. And it's actually my first weekend off in a long time. And that's so nice. <laughs> Ridiculously nice. <sighs> so I can take my time doing my podcast. I'm not rushing with anything. I'm not going anywhere. So that's lovely. Um, well, I've got my show notes over there. So I'm going to be looking over there for the minute. So I have a whip. I have a sip or a spin in progress. I have a works in progress. Actually, there are probably two works in progress, but one is a knitted project and one is a spinning project. Um, and a couple of events and retreats I want to talk to you about, which I am going to in the next year. I'm so excited. So let's talk first about my first whip. So my first whip is what I've been working on pretty much exclusively. And this is in my Girl So Sheepy a bag which I really need to give a wash because I carry it everywhere with me. Bad, bad, bad. It's in some beautiful fiber spades yarn and actually, oh, this is kind of, this is getting smaller now. Oh, it's so, so, so. Oh, this is, I think it's 55% merino, 45% uh, silk and oh, it's just absolutely gorgeous. The drape on it is cray cray. 
and it's going to be a shawl, a present for a friend of mine um, who's getting married in August so I definitely need to get this done which is why I've just been working on this and I've got quite far really I mean this is where I was the last time and I've done like a whole repeaty thing um, there are 50 billion mistakes but I've decided I'm keeping going with it because that's just, it's just part of me <laughs> my knitting journey is all the mistakes I make and all of the, I don't know, see this, this part here, I started the lace thing far too soon, I should have started over here and I don't know how I'm going to fix that but I'll fuddle, I'll fuddle through it and fudge it out, it'll be fine, be grand, but it's getting quite big now, it's all kind of bunched up on the needles which is fine. Um, but it's getting quite big and I can't wait to see how it's going to look blocked out. So the pattern, Nim Teasdale's pattern, is um, one of these patterns where you can basically do as many or as little repeats as you want. Um, so I started off with just this garter, uh, but you can start immediately with this broad leaf lace pattern. And then when you kind of get to a small, like... I, I'm going to try and do another couple of repeats because it would be nice to have a nice big shawl for her to go around her shoulders. It's a crescent shaped shawl and I think my shaping's kind of totally off because I keep on throwing in extra eyelets and stuff and I'm like, oh, Grace, Grace, stop it. But I can't, so. <laughs> um, I do have another, um, another skein of this that I haven't skeined up yet so uh, I, I have plenty of yarn so I'm going to keep going um, but this broad leaf pattern will probably continue until I run out of this and then I'll start doing a smaller uh, the small leaf uh, border um, which will just tie it off nicely and I am going to a a beading class uh, in one of the events oh, sorry um on the, in the first weekend of august so hopefully i'll be at the stage where i want to add in beads at the bottom and that would be awesome if i could do that there and maybe get some beads or find out which beads i can get for that and then finish off yeah because we're leaving on the 24th of august so that'll be grand so i'm all on track for that which is great lovely Okay, so I've been um, having some um, hand pain. So I actually have been wearing these little things again. Um, you might remember these from when I was in Sydney and when I was working with ma in mammograms. I was doing screening for mammograms and it's very, uh, mam mammography is very difficult on the hand joints just because you're doing the same repetitive motions over and over and over again. So I'm not sure whether it was tour de fleece maybe, or I'm just using these quite a lot. I feel it a lot when I'm using my phone, my thumb. I'm wondering if it's some sort of repetitive strain injury and maybe I should come off my phone a bit. Anyway, I need these when I'm knitting, especially purling, even though I'm Portuguese purling because the rows are really long and um, so I find when I'm Portuguese purling it's a lot easier to do the purl rows and I'm using this hand instead of this hand I feel like I need to give this a rest maybe I should pop it up in a sling or something and stop using it but how can I stop using my hands oh. anyway it'll be fine <gasps> the terror <laughs> um, yeah so that's going really well it's kind of all I've been knitting on I did a few rows of my a hand spun shawl that I showed you last week um, but it's not much to show so I decided no I really need to focus on, on that project and try and get it as much done as possible and you know what if you do focus on something it does get done and I've refused to rip back so it gets done even faster just with mistakes that's totally fine <laughs> so my next um, Spin in progress or the next thing I'm going to show you is a spin and I was spinning this at the weekend I basically my hands were too tired to make row legs um, so I pulled out a, a really nice uh, package from Irish fairy tale yarns and I started spinning so this is I will show you the fiber first um, so it's Irish uh, Irish fairy tale yarns color 117 117 I don't know if it'll autofocus or what but 
um, and it's 70% merino, 30% bamboo. Well, it's quite a high percentage, really. Um, so when I was pulling this out, um, I broke off a little bit, but that's fine. So I've stripped it down a little bit. So this is half of the braid. So it starts off with this lovely white with uh, little flecks of the bright bluey teal. Um, and then this is, this is me braiding it back once I'd, once I'd split the braid down the middle because I want to keep the gradient. Um, and you can see the white is the bamboo all the way through. And then it goes into this like nice navy. Now when I was spinning this, um, it's, oh, it was so beautiful to spin as usual. There's stuff, so pretty. But when I was coming to um, the end, it was getting very white. It was becoming quite white. And I think it's because the bamboo uh, was just kind of, it was just too white. And I wanted it to be nice and dark near the end. And I, <laughs> I don't know why I think like this, but sometimes I feel like the braid is too beautiful and, and I need to dye it, to spin it exactly as it is, which is silly because I could really just separate out the colors, strip the braid down and just spin it however I want the yarn to turn out. So I figured this out at the end and I actually took out um, a lot of the silver, uh, a lot of the bamboo near the end just to get a darker, um, just to get a darker end to the gradient because I think that little end piece being black is quite nice. I think like this would be quite diff difficult to distinguish from the start, you know what I mean? It wouldn't really be a gradient, a true gradient. Um, so, and it, it's just because the bamboo takes uh, takes dye differently to the merino so um, because it's a plant-based fiber so but that's perfect because you can adjust whatever you want so I'll pop that into a little nest and, and make something I don't know what I'll do with that but it should be fine yay fluff fluff nugget so yeah I've done one half and I'm going to spin the next half another time I don't know when I've kind of because Tour de Fleece is over and I really need to get that other shawl on the go and I have like 50 billion other projects I want to do I've decided to hold off on the spinning for a little while because um it really eats into your knitting time you know <laughs> even though I do love spinning and I, I will be doing it a lot now that I have a uh, but actually to be honest I think I'm doing a lot of the spinning at the events that I'm going to with my friend Liz um, which is lovely because it, you know it gives me like five six hours of non-stop spinning I've also been contacted by the Irish Guild of um, hand weavers spinners and dyers to hold classes uh, here in Limerick so I might be teaching I might be so if anyone is around Limerick and would like to learn how to spin um, contact me or contact the guild and uh, we will be organizing something in September I think there's a spinning in public day in September as well which I will be participating in too so that's super exciting so yeah it's really really exciting I love the idea of teaching um, so that's enjoyable. Also, I was listening to a podcast recently, I think it was, knit, it was definitely Knit British, and she was talking to a woman from knittingforall.com. Gosh, I cannot remember her name, but, um, they're basically, she's, um, she trains teachers who go into schools or young people. She actually, it's basically teacher training for knitting teachers and they've got a franchise and they've got several around Ireland and like hundreds around England maybe not hundreds like maybe 50 around uh, England or the UK and a couple in Ireland and then in Northern Ireland yet we need to get Northern Ireland on board come on Northern Ireland um, but knitting for all is the uh, the details for it and I'm really thinking about contacting them um, because I would love to I'd love to be properly trained in how to teach because I have never had any like formal training in teaching but I think I am good at it <laughs> that's what my students inside and work tell me so <laughs> who am I to, to, to deny them you know but that's something really interesting interesting um, that I 
uh, a podcast that I listen to. I've been binging on Knit British on Louise uh, Louise Scully's podcast, uh, audio podcast. Um, I love it. I love her so much. She's she has um, some really really cool blind wool reviews at the moment, and I'm just learning so much about things like hand squish grab and <laughs> like like blocking and I always just learn so much with her podcast. She's a fantastic podcaster and she has um, incredible opinions. <laughs> I love listening to her and she's doing some really really lovely uh, interviews with some of her woolly muckers who are her um, podcast followers who have uh, chosen to donate something towards the podcast and she's just so like really involving them so heavily in the podcast production like that is proper proper involvement it's fantastic i love what you do louise big love so where was i oh yes um so i'm spinning i was spinning that um just checking it was on <laughs> i was spinning that lovely um irish fairy tale yarns fiber I don't know if I told you it was Irish fairy tale yarns, Gabriella from Irish fairy, Gabriella and Carlo from Irish fairy tale yarns. Um, I also finished a project, uh, which I don't know if I showed you last week, um, but this is the um, kind of chocolate and mint colorway, and it, it's kind of crazily blowing out there. Um, it's just, it's like chocolate chip mint loveliness. You'll notice I'm not wearing my water lily today because Laura <laughs> was like, is that the one we're going to see you in consistently now? And I'm like, no, damn, <laughs> I want to wear it all the time. I'll have to like spread out. I need to make more clothing so that I can um, like give you a varied appearance and make you think that you haven't just seen the same thing over and over again anyway. <laughs> So this is a beautiful gradient um, by Irish Fairy Tale um, Yarns and I'm just in love with it. Love with it. I think I have shown it to you. Oh well, you got to see it again, you lucky ducks. So, yes. I'll just tidy it back up again to a big squish pile. This is my hand dyed yarn pile here. It's so pretty. Apart from these two, these are a couple of uh, New York skeins which I haven't hung up yet. Um, so that is um what I have been working on. What I have been dreaming of working on is some of this yarn here. It's Pasquale uh, Filati Naturali, which sounds Italian. Let's go with that. It's called Nepal, and it is a cotton, linen, and nettle blend. Um, it's color, it's got, okay, so the colors are 11, 1, and 3, and I don't know which ones are which, but they were gifted to me by um, the lovely Laura from Woolly Wolverine, who lives just up the road from me, and I'm going to be talking about her more in a minute, but these are the lovely colors so far. Wow, oh, dear Lord. <laughs> So I was thinking, okay, so these are kind of like a sport weight. Um, that middle one is more of a, like a duck egg blue type of thing. Um, they're kind of a sport weight uh, linen-y type, linen, cotton and nettle. And I was thinking, oh, could I make, I was thinking of making Mina's snow day shawl, but that's kind of like a snuggly shawl. And I was thinking, oh, maybe I could make another top, like a really lacy top, like, and really get, a lot of yardage out of this but I'm never it's never gonna work <laughs> but then I found this yarn that was sent to me by um, Fatima of the Knit Knacker Natters podcast and, I, and it's cotton and lamb's wool 50% cotton and 50% lamb's wool and I was like that could go together somehow Ooh. and I was thinking I there's slightly different weights I think I think this is more of a lacy weight Maybe it's fingering weight and this is a, so this, these would be fingering weight and this would be a sport weight. And I was thinking maybe this could be like lace panels in the garment and this could be a deep, like big 
gartery stitches or stockinette stitches. And I was thinking about the pattern that was gifted to me, and I don't know who by, I'm so sorry, by uh, Summer, it's the Summer on You, a kind of a vest top. It's really open, very large, open wide gauge, knit with very big needles. And it it's apparently, apparently it's quite a big fast knit. <laughs> but I'm not a very fast knitter, but I was thinking if I could do some sort of gradienty fade thing, that would be super nice, I think. Maybe this could be along the bottom in like a random lace thing or something. Just, just like loads of eyelets or something. Hmm. Or I'll just go up a needle size on these ones, but I think I'm gonna probably have to buy a large needle set. Oh no! <laughs> um, Just to get like a nice open gauge on, the, on this. The biggest needle I have is a five millimeter, and I think I'd probably need like a six or seven millimeter. We'll see. So that's an idea, that's some ideas. And I have gauge swatched for my so faded, but I haven't cast it on yet um, because I'm working on my um, that pattern for um, my friend's wedding. So I don't know when I'm going to start that, but I do need to get some obligatory knits done first before I start on that lovely piece of equipment. And I was thinking maybe I could get this done before summer's out so I could still wear it. Now, summer in Ireland it can be quite hot, it can be quite humid. Hot is. It can be like, you know, 22 degrees for about a week or two, but it, it often comes with severe humidity and close, we call it. <laughs> so I didn't realize, but apparently nowhere else in the world calls humidity closeness or you'd go out and you say, gosh, it's very close out there today. You know, it's very close. Does anywhere else in the world use this word close for humid? Because <laughs> I didn't realize what humidity was until I left Ireland and people saying it's so humid, it's so humid today. Oh, I couldn't live in Singapore because it's so humid or I couldn't live in Sydney because it's so humid. And then I realised I've lived in it all my life because Ireland is very wet. You know, it's kind of a wet country. So it rains all the time, but it just gets a bit hotter in summer. So it, you just get wet rain or like this really kind of intense, wet, humid, close heat. <laughs> which makes it feel a lot warmer and stickier and uncomfortable than if it was dry heat with a nice wind. I love a nice breeze. Fabulous. Um, yeah, <laughs> let me know if you've ever heard that word close being used uh, instead of humid. <laughs> Hilarious. I love finding things out like that. Um, yeah, so what else is I going to talk about? Oh yes, let's get on to the traveling section. So next weekend, I have a very, very, very fun thing that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be up, going up to the Yarn Folk Wool Festival in, oh, crrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
<laughs> I can't remember who it was. Maybe it was on the VKN. But she was like, Grace, you actually scared the crap out of me because you gave me a big hug. And I was like, I'm a hugger. Warning, warning. <laughs> um, I really want to get some cards or business cards or buttons or something, but I'm not very organized, so maybe not. Um, yeah, but if you are coming, please say hello. I cannot wait. There's going to be so many beautiful dyers there, wonderful dyers there. Um, and I'm so excited. Yay! Um, another thing that is happening um, on the 20th of August, which is two weeks after that, is a spinning demonstration in Craganowen, which is um, a place that I've taken you to in one of my vlogs. Um, so there's going to be a big bunch of us sitting in the old fashioned like um, Cranog, which is kind of like a hill fort with, where the, with, the, with the patch cottages and all that sort of stuff. And uh, that's going to be really exciting because um, I just, Craganowen is like the stuff of my dreams and I would live there if I could. <laughs> oh, so beautiful. So that's really exciting. Um, then on the 28th, 9th of September I'm going to the Atlantic Knitscapes Retreat which is run by a wonderful woman who I met on the VKN uh, called Catherine ha Hastings and I am so excited so excited um, there is it's a very small retreat I think there's only 20 spaces um, and it's run on the west coast of Mayo uh, very rural, very relaxed, just chilling out, laughing, knitting and shopping because <laughs> there's a marketplace on the Saturday night. So I've got the Friday off where I'm going to drive up. Um, I think Gabriella's coming, Gabriella from Irish Fairy Tale Yarns, she's coming. And uh, I've basically said, hey, can you pick me up on the way? Because <laughs> it's, it's like a straight shot. <laughs> I hope you don't mind, Gabriella. <laughs> Tough. Although, yeah, I mean, I can drive too if you want. Um, but it would be a long journey for me to go down and pick you up and then go up. <laughs> so that's really exciting. Um, yeah, it's going to be wonderful. Now, Catherine does run these retreats um, in May and September. Uh, she has been running them for four years, I think. Three or four years, Catherine? I can't remember. But if any, I've got a couple, and people have come from all over the world to come to these retreats because it's set in the most beautiful part of Ireland. Oh my goodness. I cannot wait to show you actually because you're coming with me, obviously. You're all hiding away in my trunk and I'm going to bring you with me. And um, I hope that uh, it keeps growing because it's just amazing and wonderful. It's along the wild Atlantic way in the rural west of Ireland and it's just stunning. She was, uh, Catherine was showing us her view out of her window and I was just like, stop it. Beautiful sunset over the, over the, the sea at the Atlantic and oh, heavenly, heavenly, heavenly. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm going to put show notes, um, uh, links in the show notes for all of this, all of these uh, retreats. Uh, information about them. Catherine has a Facebook page and it's a private Facebook page but if you're interested you should definitely um, ask to join and then you can see all the photographs and it actually becomes um, a, apparently what I can see it becomes a really lovely um, community of online knitters like for people who've met um, at this event and then you know make something with the yarn or it's just really, really lovely. So if you're interested, please join that Facebook group. I hope you don't mind, Catherine. <laughs> um, then there's a big one coming up. Big, big, big one. So <laughs> John from the Beardy Chill podcast has organized a retreat in Greece, <laughs> in the island of Rhodes in Greece. And he set it for the 18th of, no, hang on, I've got that wrong already. The May, the 20 something of May, the end of May, running until the 2nd of June. Gosh, I could get, oh, hang on, I have it here. One second. Yes, the 26th of May, 2018, to the Saturday, the 2nd of June, 2018, in the Rhodian Sun Hotel on the island of Rhodes. I cannot 
wait. So it's a week, it's a full week, full board pretty much, um, excursions included as well as um, like food and drink and everything like up until 11 o'clock at night. There are, um, there's a pool, it's a wonderful restaurant, wonderful people. So um, I'm definitely going, bringing my significant other and a couple of other people are bringing their significant others and James says he's just gonna, he's gonna, you know, park up. He's gonna basically put me, put me beside the pool with a, a glass of, you know, something sparkly, something alcoholic with a tiny umbrella in it for the entire week and he's happy. So I'm like, fine, I'm gonna go away in it. <laughs> and the sock matician is coming, Nathan, the sock matician. And Ellie is also, so he's teaching, he's doing a class. Ellie from Skein Deer Podcast is doing a, a class as well, as far as I'm aware. John might be doing a class and I think there's somebody else. Oh, I cannot remember. Um, itinerary. Ooh, show me the itinerary. I actually just booked. I was like, I'm booking. I'm booking. I'm there. <laughs> um, oh, there's like a nitty quiz night. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> there's, oh, that it's an excursion to a winery and a village craft cooperative. <gasps> there's the retreat Oscars. Oh my goodness. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be wonderful. I'm so excited. On Monday and Wednesday, there'll be classes. And then all the other days are kind of like, you can go to the excursions or you can just sit and knit. Oh my God, I can't think of any more, anything more amazing than that. Oh my goodness. So I'm really excited about that. And if any, there are still places available. They have, he has about 50% booked out at the moment as of, booking so if you are interested there's plenty of time to save up you can put in a deposit you don't have to pay until March so if you want to get saving um, mainly for flights I think flights are probably going to be the most expensive bit the actual retreat is incredibly well priced for what it is have a look see if it's in your budget maybe we'll have a lovely get together in May I'm so excited oh my god <laughs> So this year is going to be incredible for me, actually. This year is going to be really, really amazing. Oh, I'm also going to Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Duh. But I don't think I can... I my, my aunt is getting married on the 17th, which is St. Patrick's Day. She's getting married on the 17th of May, or March. Um, so I think I'm only going to be able to go to the Thursday and Friday session. Um, so I'm going to probably fly out on Friday night and get home and... Um, do all that sort of jazz. So I'm thinking about organising um, something for Thursday night. It'd be a nice get together. Would be nice, I think, because it's the only night I have there. So <laughs> um, yeah, but that's like far in the future for me. So <laughs> I'm really excited about that. I've just booked it off in work, so I'm like, awesome. So there's so much happening. There's so much going on. It's wonderful. It's. Oh, so so wonderful so this week coming um, I'm going to be just working away I'm going to try and get as much done on that shawl as possible the rows are getting very long now but that's fine <laughs> and um, I want to uh, thank everybody who's stuck with me and thank you if you are one of the returning viewers I really really appreciate everything like every time you come back and uh, there's such lovely wonderful comments and I love getting comments I love getting messages under the the YouTube video um thank you so much for being with me and coming with me and listening to my nonsense also I just can't get over that the pegboard at the back there it's so pretty I want to show you one more time because it's so pretty ah <sighs> So nice. Makes me want to knit everything, all of them, right now. But also keep them there forever because they're too beautiful. My life is so difficult. <laughs> Absolutely not. So lucky. Um, I'm really lucky to have everyone who watches. Um, I'm really lucky to be in the place that I am. And here's to everything health-wise working out in the next week or two. Will you keep your fingers crossed for me? That'd be great. 
I love you all. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week. Bye.